Oh, you may. She has been the butt of many jokes I've made regarding quality control, mainly because of the fact that this figure was so frustrating to review that I cut it off midway and gave her one of the lowest scores of all. Now, time has gone on and it has seen her re-released, just like many of the other girls. I loved her design originally, but she just didn't work as a figure. So it was nice to see that they finally decided to give her the remake she deserved. Like the other girls, she got re-released as Polynian number 3A, Dreamy. Rather than changing her original Yume name and adding some descriptor, they gave her her entire own name. Does this imply that she's an entirely new character? Hopefully she's that much different to warrant the name. But there's only one way to figure that out. So, will Dreamy be the dream that we've been waiting for, or will she, like Yume, be a nightmare? More like Boome, am I right? But let's take a look at that box. On the front, of course, we have the usual low opacity and a pose shot to the right. One side shows her robo booty, another side shows her very happy smile. And the back's no different, showing some pose shots, as well as showing her with some of her different accessories. But let's open the front of the box. We have the usual windowed display, and unlike some of the others, she's actually depicted on the left here with a couple of different hairstyles, one being pigtails and the other just being long flowing hair. I'll remind you she normally has a ponytail. She's then depicted down here with some of her accessories and with some information regarding them, as well as another pose shot. Here's what she looks like inside the box, but let's open her up. And as usual, she's just under six inches, making her 112 scale. But here's the figure itself, and I've gotta say that in hand already, I'm rather impressed. The figure is much sturdier, I can say that just by holding her even by her feet. She has very nice pale gray skin, it's very muted. I do love the pink and white uniform with the white accents, and even that little hint of orange in there really does pop out. I gotta say, she does look much different than Yume. Of course, Yume had that metallic look to her, which was one of the things that they changed when they re-released her. So I'm happy to see Dreamy here with a bit more of a pastel pale look, as well as her skin tone seems to be part of her molding rather than being painted on. But unfortunately, we've already got a problem in the fact that I was trying to show you the posability of her hair and I somehow actually broke this little hair bow right here. As you can see, there's a little bend right there which has caused that thin layer of plastic to sort of crack. It's not falling off and I could fix it, but it's a bit annoying. But let's get into articulation. If I plug her hair back in, we're going to omit that bow just so that I can show you her hair goes up and down and it can be swiveled as well. Of course, she is composed of the many ball peg joints like the other girls are, as you can see here. So let's get into it. Of course, her head is no different from the other girls. It can go up and down and it can be swiveled so it can be rolled around. She has a ball peg joint on her shoulder, which allows it to go in and out and swivel, as well as her elbow can go in and out and swivel. She also has a ball peg joint at her wrist, which goes up and down and can be swiveled. Her waist does not allow for a crunch forward thanks to that tie being a little stiff but she can crunch rather far back, which I suppose is a nice trade-off. Now, her skirt is that flexible plastic as the others have been, and that allows her to be able to kick out. And then of course you can swivel that leg. Her knee has the same ability to bend in and out and swivel. And finally, her foot goes just up and down ever so slightly and can be swiveled very gently, but that's it. This really is annoying me though. Like this is a nice part and you probably should keep it on her head. And I don't wanna think that I'm entirely responsible for this. This is incredibly light and just a tiny bit of bend to it was able to split it. So be careful with this part because I will say this is a problematic piece that could break your figure. One thing about this figure that I like is that since she's the newest figure, she seems to be the culmination of everything they've learned along the way making these. Her paint apps are almost perfect. There's hardly any errors in her painting. She's solid, her joints all work well. They really learned a lot as they made this line and that makes me happy. But let me stop gushing so that we can get into her accessories. She of course comes with this pair of bald fists as standard. She comes with a pair of spread fingered open hands. She comes with a pair of bald accessory fists like the other Polynesian figures and they have holes in them which would allow you to adapt accessories. Now also like the other characters, you can pop off her hair, remove her faceplate, and then choose a new faceplate to attach. Plug that in, put her hair plate back on her head, and now you've changed her expression to a rather happy look. And additionally, she has this somewhat seductive look with very narrow eyes. I actually really like this one. 
But while she has the accessory fists on, let's utilize them for some of her other accessories. One being her suitcase here, which you can see has just a little bit of a paint error on it, but this thing is pretty small, so I don't see it as that big a problem. Of course, there is a peg on the back, which allows you to plug it into either her waist, which looks okay, or you can take it out and plug it into the hole on her back, which I think looks a little better. But ultimately, I'm sure you're supposed to plug this little handle here into her hand. And there you go, she's ready to go to school. And like every robotic schoolgirl, what is she without her amazing blade? Yes, the Polynian sword that's included with her looks rather similar to the sword from Sword Art Online, which I guess is cool if you're into that. I do love the orange highlight on the edge of the blade. It really does work well with the pink and white, surprisingly, even though I feel like the pink was bright enough. But it all contrasts really nicely. Now, like the suitcase, you can plug it into her waist, which looks pretty good or you can plug it into her back, which also looks pretty good. But ultimately, you're supposed to plug this thing into her hand. It is a sword after all, and man, she looks great holding it. But honestly, this blade is awesome. It just looks so much better than the one that came with Yume. It's so much brighter with that orange on the edge. It almost looks like a safety precaution, but obviously enough, this thing could do some damage in the wrong hands. And like the other girls in the school uniforms, she also comes with a pair of the Polynian Robo Thrusters. These things came with Vanya and Yume, and they are just kind of a stapled piece with these, and they have a little peg on the back, which allows them to plug rather easily into the skirt. And it opens her up quite a bit. I do rather like this accessory. I always thought that the thrusters were kind of a great way to show speed, or maybe even them giving off excess heat from potentially doing a big attack. So I'm a big fan of these. And like the other girls, if you turn her around, you can go ahead and flick off this tiny little ribbon here and that will allow you to move her skirt up and down. If you unplug her waist, you can then get access to removing her skirt. <laughs> oh, and there we have it. Plug her waist back in, and now you get to see that delicious robo booty. I mean, damn, just look at this thing. Honestly though, I love these purple underwear. They look so cute. That pink ribbon is just perfectly placed. I know I said I love the red and black ones, but these ones work just almost as well. They contrast so well with her pale gray skin, and I can't stop looking at them. But with all that out of the way, what do I think about this figure? Ultimately, I think that Yume was a great design, but she was poorly executed. Even later when they re-released her, she had some problems. Whereas I feel like Dreamy is, yes, an entirely new character. They corrected everything they got wrong with the other figures, and they did her right. Dreamy really holds up to her namesake. She's a dreamy type of girl. She reminds me of what would be the very attractive high school girl, as compared to Yume, who's a little bit more standard. The pink and white really gives her an air of almost arrogance in a way. She looks incredibly sweet, but that additional face really just makes me think there's something behind those eyes. Her colors work extremely well. The pink and white was really cute enough, but those small hints of orange in her blade, her hair bow, and her tie really push her over the edge for me. I'm surprised at how much I love that orange in there. Now look. I originally gave Yume one of the lowest scores of any Polynesian figure, but I am so glad to finally say that they did it right, and I am going to give Dreamy a solid 8 out of 10. I would have given her a 9, but I feel like she's missing an accessory that could really push her over the edge. She really is wonderful, and I'm glad that I got her, and honestly, if I were to get one now, I would prefer to get Dreamy over getting Yume. Somehow Yume has held value really well. If you want to get the renewal edition, she's like $150. Dreamy here is only $80, which I think is pretty fair compared to what they normally shoot up to after release. But that's gonna do it, guys. I can finally put Dreamy on the shelf here. If we look around here, we can see that I've finally completed reviewing all the different designs of Polynesian figures. Every different sculpt, every character, we've done it. It's been a really crazy ride. I've loved these figures all the way through, and I can't wait to see where they go with the line now that they've really gotten their bearings. I'm going to continue reviewing them as we go on, but obviously enough, they have to come out for me to do so.
But until then guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video to show me that you do enjoy these Polynesian reviews. Would you rather get Dreamy or Yume? Why don't you go ahead and comment below and let me know. If you wanna see other figure reviews, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified when I upload stuff because I do it every week. I'm gonna link another video on the screen here and if you click it, it does help me out and I really appreciate it. But until the next video comes, thank you so much for watching and keep on collecting.